Hi everyone. I know you're gonna be bobbly at the moment. Ah, here we go. Hello everyone. So I'm on early. You might see my head a few times today, but who knows? Uh, just makes a reference in the picture. Marvellous. Look at that. So if you're on, please say hello. Please type in hello. That's why now we're watching. I am on early, so no problem. There's a ribbit ribbit. Hi Alani. Hi Mel. So if you can share this video with your fellow crafters, that would be lovely. Hi Tina, hi Judith. Show you this lovely card. So I'm going to hold this like that until we can see to see if we can see the shimmer on it. You can just see the shimmer on the on all the dots up here. You can see the shimmer on the Dragonfly has got a bit of a purpley and green shimmer as well, and the frogs are all shimmery as well. Alright, so this is what we're going to do. Hi Alison. Just don't forget to share this if you can, and we'll get going now when it's... When we get to 2 o'clock, we'll get going then. Another two minutes, yeah. So as you can see, there's a little bit of paper about you, and it says ribbit, ribbit. So if there's no space, hi Bev. So there's no space between ribbit, ribbit, and it doesn't matter whether you use the capital R's, you can use any sort of font, any case, size, and basically there's a 10% off anything that's in our link that's on the bottom of the comment section there. So anything that's within that link for today's class there's 10% off. But you do need to put ribbit ribbit in the end bit when you go to pay when you're doing an order. And that's all because this is our 50th. Facebook Live since lockdown in March last year. So that's almost one a week that we've done. Hi Carolyn. Hi Bev. So what's the time? Is it two? Yep, it's two o'clock so we can actually look at getting going. Right, so I'm going to show you how to do this froggy card. There's a frog on a lily pad. There's a frog just popping out of the water there as well. You can see the shimmery all over the card as well. It's a little dragonfly. Then we've got bulrushes and then we've got leaves. And all the stamps that are in this is actually in the Friendly Frogs clear stamp set so there's bulrushes there's grasses there's underwater ones there's tadpoles 
little splashes of water, little droplets of water, little fly tadpoles, uh, frog spawn, butterflies. So there's all different types of frogs, hopping ones, swimming ones, diving ones. So that's what we're going to use. Okay. So yes, there's, so there is a coupon code in the shopping card to get your discount. Thank you, Annie. Yes, it is quite a, a thing to do 50 videos, 50 lives. So without further ado, I need to tell you what I'm using to make this card. So I'm using the frog stamps. I'm using one of the, I'm using the Floral Swirl uh, Slimline Stencil, which is something new that we had in last week. And I'm using an A5 media plate, but you can just do it on your mat, on your non-stick mat or your glass mat. Hi Maria. So first things first is we need to get our background. So this nice background that's in there. Okay. So I need to take my A5 media plate. And this is like a gel plate, but it's a thinner version. Um, and it's a John Next Door product, and it is a lot cheaper than the pl normal plates as well. So I've done that. I've taken the plastic off both sides, and that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to place that onto my non-stick mat. Okay, and I've got some. Pixie sparkles in my little paint tray thing here and what I've got I've got um, Gooby Grape, Pale Blush, Beyond Blue, Teal Marine, Zesty Lime and Coral Crush. So I've just taken the powder uh, that's beyond blue. I'll just tap the pot until some powder comes into the into the gap, and then I'm just taking some water. So it's just tap water. Hi Ali. Hi Sarah. Hi Karen. And that's what I'm doing. I'm adding a few little drops of water into the pixie sparkles, and what this does, it forms. Um, a paint or a watercolour. Hi Sandra. And that's all I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the lightest colour with my brush and mix that. And I'm going to actually mix all these up. So I'm sorry if you get a bit of my bald head. Just got a bit of kitchen towel. On, so I'm just going to, because I'm going to be using the same brush, I'm just going to Take the colours off. So I'm just mixing those powders up. And then you've got all that shimmer then within the paints. So you can see there's a nice little shimmer to that. So I've actually had this before and you can see this all dried inside. And I've just added extra powder to it. So the more you mix it, the more the, the old stuff that I've dried in the pots will actually become a paint again, basically. Okay. Right. Hi, Sarah Browning. How are you? And then I'm just going to put some water on there. And I'm just going to wash my brush a bit cleaner. Hi Val, hi Valerie. So the first thing I need to do, this is a jelly plate or a media plate and I'm going to start. So with my image, I want it to be nice and light in the middle and then I'm going to do the blues and the greens sort of around the outer edges. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just taking my little brush 
and I'm just splashing some of the light pink which is the tail crush I'm just doing little dots and I'm just putting lots in the middle so I don't want to paint it on I just want to get some splashes because I want to get that sort of natural sort of pattern patination to it oh thank you very much my lovely assistant have just brought me some water to clean my brush so and then what I'm going to do I'm going to take some of the teal this is the teal marine I'm just going around the edge yes we're both well Val So if you haven't got a jelly plate you can actually do this straight onto your onto your mat or if you've got a blending mat you can do it straight onto there as well. So don't be afraid. You now have a go even if you haven't if you've got a plastic pocket there, just do it on the surface of the plastic pocket. So that's my teal. And then I'm going to go into my lime, my zesty lime. And get some green down this bottom bit. And the shimmer that's on this is amazing. I love it. Okay. And then just for a little bit of darkness, I'm just going to go in with the beyond the blue. And put a lot more blue at the top. So if any of you have got a fan brush that'll work it easier but I'm using just a normal small paintbrush and a little bit of blue down the bottom there. There we are. Yeah I like playing around with different things. Mel. Mel says very interesting not seen this one before. So this is sort of your jelly plate then and then what I've got is you can either use watercolor card or I've got um, a porous piece of I will pick a mix card thank you Wayne and what I'm going to do that's all there if you find if you're taking a long time you've got a hot room you can spritz that with a little bit of water which but I wouldn't add too much we want to keep that shimmer and the more water you add the less it will get I'm just going to put this piece of paper down, so that's A5, it's A5 in size, and I'm just going to run my fingers along the back. Like I said, this is, this is a porous card, so it's not a super smooth or a multifarious card, you can use that. And that's all I'm going to do is just lift that up and it gives me a nice little splattering of colour. Okay. Hi gamer. So do I want a little bit more on that? This is up to you now. You can you can take a little bit more, you can add less, but I think for now that's fine. I'm quite happy with that. I don't know. So what I'm going to do, so there is still mica and everything on you. So what you can do is take another pull, or you can just spritz it with lots of water. The mica becomes more invigorated. So this was one I actually did before before I did the actual one for the car. This was my first go, and it just came out too dark for me. So I'm using the back of this to pick up some of my waste and I'll use the back end of this card then on something else. So I'm just picking up some of that rubbish and you can just tap it along. The mica is amazing in there. 
and then I'm just going to pop that to the side to dry. And then everything else can just be wiped up. And anything else will just wipe off your, your mat nicely. Like that. Just like that. And even if there is mica on it, it'll just come into your next piece of work. Okay, and that is my jelly plate done. Thanks, Reese. And when that dries, you start getting all the sort of shimmer. Don't know if you can see that. Start getting all the shimmer from it. Okay. And then what I want to do, I want to take my slimline stencil, and this is the floral swirl. There are others in the range, which I think Gavin have put them all on, I think. I'm not sure. And all I'm going to do is I'm placing it over my card, and I'm going to bring in um, a grasshopper and a green topaz um, ink pad. So this is just a light green and a dark green and I'm bringing in my little green uh, soft brush for inking through stencils. That's okay Deborah. it's nice to have you on darling. Hope everybody is okay. So I'm just gonna take the light green first and I'm gonna sort of do sort of the half moon sort of sweep around you. So just on, and these are opaque pigments, ink pads, I'm just coming around, not adding too much, but there is a nice little pattern going into there then. And I will show this in a minute. When I show you that then you can actually see that that pattern is there. Okay, Let's bring it up so you can see it. So there you are, so it's sort of like a, a scales or leaves or some sort of thing like that. And then I'm going to do the same down this other side. So this was with the grasshopper green. Yeah, you can actually do it straight onto your mat or your glass mat and just tap down your colours. <laughs> but there is 10% off it and I think they're only 10 99 or something like that, I think, normally. Uh, but you can use your glass mat or a bit of plastic, plastic pocket or stuff like that. So if anybody wants to have a go at this really quickly, that's what I'm doing you know you can sort of try that but I do find it spreads better with a jelly plate but you know it depends on the look you're after so I've got that pattern there so it's all about building up your backgrounds and then I'm going to place that back on in exactly the same place so you can see the pattern through Have a look, get that right. That's right, yeah, and there we are. I got it. So that's perfectly on top. And I'm going to take my green topaz. Um, you can use a dye based or pigment based inks. Um, you don't want to be using archival really, unless you want to do some sort of water coloring over the top of it after. But archival is. Um, quite a permanent ink so um, yeah dye based or pigment but remember you can't put water over that then because it will so I'm just dabbing in little places there just to bring a little bit of the darkness <laughs> yeah so when you go to order there is a code 
when you get to the end to get your 10% off anything that's in this class, um, in this live um, area on our website. So there we are, so you can see that pattern is a lot nicer. That's okay Maria, no problem. If you've got any questions, please feel free to ask because that's how we all learn. Okay, so that's that. And then to clean the stencil, I could spritz that and put that onto my bit of paper. So again, I could take that, I could, that's my bit of waste. Spritz that and then push that down onto my bit of card. Ink side down and that should transfer some of the pattern onto there as well. So you can see you just get the opposite then of that. So I like building backgrounds. And with most pigment based inks, it'll just wipe off your stencil with water. You can run it under the water. But if you find you do get a stubborn stain from any pigment or any of the dye inks, um, you can also use your archival ink cleaner on your stencil like that. And then you can just wipe the archival stamp cleaner and that will actually clean it all off. It comes up lovely and clean. Okay. So that is the stencil in. Done. So what I'm going to do now is just give this a little bit of a wipe down. Just move all my water and my spritz into the back. going to roll that up out of the way a minute. A little, a little. Out to the back there. And then I'm going to, so this is nice and, so the card feels a little bit wet, so I don't really want to be stamping on there until it's dry. So I'm going to just give it a quick blast with my heat gun. You could just leave it dry naturally. I'm drying it from the back now as well, and then I will flatten up my card. Thank you, Reese. It's very kind of you to share it. If anybody, if you can all share it, that always helps. There might be people you know that are not following Valley Craft and won't see this. So now we've got Ribbit, ribbit. I don't know if your cam video is going to be funny, mine is at the moment. So just ribbit, ribbit without a space in the middle. So don't put a space in the middle, it's just one word ribbit, ribbit when you come to the thing. And there is a, an instruction thing on Valley Craft for that as well. So I'm now going to bring in my trusty presser impress you might have the tonic one you might have one misty's you might have another one that's entirely up to you i like this one and i'm going to take my piece of card i'm just going to place that there and i will be trimming this down a little bit as well Don't forget any questions, don't be afraid to ask. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the frog that's on a lily pad. I'm going to place that frog in there. So I'm just making sure my lily pad is straight. I'm also going to take my dragonfly. Do I take that one? Yeah, I take that one. 
I want the dragonflies to come floating down there. So I'm going to put a few stamps on there this time. And I've also got a frog that's in the water. So we'll bring them. So I'll show you those images I'm using. So I'm using the little frog that's just popping out of the water. I've got a frog that's on the lily pad and I'm just using this little dragonfly there. And this is the first things I want to do. So I'm going to bring my thing over. That'll pick them up. Make sure that goes all the way into the corner. Yeah, I thought that might have been... I thought it was my screen as well. I think it's because there's so many people on the internet at the moment that it's actually causing problems. So I hope it doesn't affect too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to take the green topaz and I'm just gently rubbing across the top of the stamps. A gentle tap. Because this is a sponge, it's very soft so you don't need to push down too much. And I'm going to stamp them on there. And it just gives me a nice light outline of the images okay so then what I do I give my stamps a clean but leave them on the block leave them on the press to press so I've now got my little faint images and you can't quite see them but I'm going to show you them anyway and then what I'm going to do I'm going to take my brush I'm going to take my zesty line and I'm because I can see where the frog is I'm actually going to color the frog so this is the pixie sparkles again I'm actually going to color the frog and then what I'll do, I'll lift this up then to show you before I restamp it later. Really get some colour down in there. The more powder that's in your pot, the darker the colour will come out. So that's my green. And I'm going to add a bit of green into this frog here as well. And then with the dragonfly, I'm going to put a little bit of green in the wings. So I'm literally just tapping and just a little dot across the body. And then wash my brush. And I'm going to take the teal and in the centre bit here I can actually mix a couple of colours. So I'm going to take the teal and a pot of that green and I'm going to make, I'll pick up some of that, and I'm going to make a darker green so you can actually mix your own colours now. I'm actually going to do the lily pad. And it doesn't look much at the moment, but it will come to life in a minute. I'm hoping it's not breaking up too much now. Oh, thank you, Luis. People, she is amazing. So that's that and now I'm going to go in with some of the purple or groovy grey so I'm 
little bit here to the wings and then a couple of little dots along the body as well. Now I don't know why Facebook is Facebook really seems to be playing up at the moment. If we could figure out another way of doing it, we we probably would, but they are the best ways of doing it. So I've now done the frog and this frog and I've done that. So what I'm going to do now is add a bit of blue in for water. I'm gonna go in my teal first. I'm coming up a little bit higher than you would normally think, but I don't want just go in and don't have to be too fussy with this colour. With this colouring, just get it in because you're going to be stamping a bit more later. So you can see I'm not being too fussy with that. Go in with a slightly darker blue and the, the, the lily pad from where the frog is along the top so we've got a perfect definition from the top of the water. Quite happy with that. So what I'm just going to do now, while it's still on my mat, my stamping tool, I'm just going to make sure all of these areas are dry, especially the frog and the dragonfly. Because then what I need to do, make sure that's still in the corner, and then I'm going to take Oh, thank you, Jill. I, I love messing around with backgrounds and stuff like that. I find it very therapeutic and you can use them to stamp on or you can just use them as a plain background. So the amount of backgrounds you can make is great. So I'm just ink this up in the Versafine Clay Nocturne. And I'm actually stamping out over the frogs and over the dragonfly. So when I then lift that up, you end up with you end up with your frogs and your dragonfly all covered in with a shimmer. But it's got that perfect outline. Stamps, then it wouldn't actually show because of the shimmer. The shimmer so that was just my archival link cleaner, just cleaning those stamps. Then put them back on to there, and then I'm going to show you how we do the back, all the leaves and stuff like that. So again, because this is just a basically a one background card, it's it's quite a cheap card to do because you can um, dab your inks down on a glass mat add some water to them and splash them around on your mat as well to actually do that. So we've now got this year, all the frogs and the things all nicely done, but I need to add some greenery and stuff to it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring my mat back in. And the reason I'm bringing my mat back in is because I'm going to be, might be stamping over the edge of the card. And I want to make sure I'm not damaging my sponge on this. I don't want any ink going onto my sponge. So this is the bit I'm going to do now is this and the bulrushes and, and that. Okay, so I'm going to keep that there so you can have a reference of where we go in. So the first thing 
I'm going to do, there's a few leaves on this stamp set. There's a large leaf down in that corner, there's a small leaf in that corner, and then there's also um, a branch of leaves next to that. So they're all in the bottom around a, a nice large tadpole, let's call it legs. Um, I'm going to start with the large leaf and I'm just using um, a small acrylic pot this time because I'm going to be moving it around quite a bit. And I'm still going to use my green topaz. And I'm just going to rub and tap gently. And then I'm just going to start building a little background of little leaves. And you can go as random as you want on this. You can come down as low as you want, as high as you want. And I'll show you all these in a minute. And put another one up there. Let's get another one in there. One off the end there. I think we'll just put another one in there. And another one there. So there's us we can just see, hopefully. But they are just sort of a very pale leaf there as well. Yeah, you can just see all the pale leaves in that image. So what I'm going to do with that first is take my mixture. And ooh, this is where it's your choice now. You can go in with sort of a bit of blue first. So I'm going in with a teal, just to put a base coat in there. Just gives you the outline, basically, to just colour it. And don't worry about going outside the line either. This is a very forgiving card. So literally this is just your pixie sparkles again. Which means these leaves are going to be so shimmery. They'll have a nice shimmer and a sparkle to them. It doesn't look like it's doing much at the moment with the colour. But we're going to add some green onto that as well. Yeah, add a bit of green. So because this card is still a bit wet with the, with the teal, this green will actually mix in with it and make it a bit darker. So like I said, don't have to be too fussy with it. Just get it in, paint it. Sometimes it's about just the enjoyment and the relaxation of being in it, of doing something. That's because it is. <laughs> it is very easy, Tara. Just put that in and then just a little bit of the blue just to bring out that colour as well. So I'm mixing a few colours of the, the pixie sparkles on top of each other. You can keep some of them lighter, you can add some of them so they're darker. I'm just going to keep them all to the same sort of thing. Remember your sparkle will, your colour and your sparkle will drop to the bottom of the pot as well. So sometimes you just need to mix them up. Yeah, pixie powders, pixie sparkles, you can uh, mica powders, you can you can colour and paint with any of them. Okay, so that's that. So I've just coloured, painted those leaves. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give them a quick blast with the heat gun, just to get them dry. The card is curling. 
turn it to the back and dry it on the back as well and that will flatten your card out again and I just make sure it's dry yes it's dry enough so while I've got this here now I also need to stamp this fine clay to put the outlines of these stamps on there now if you're not sure if it is dry and you want to make sure just put your kitchen towel on and lift that off but it should be dry and it's got some lovely sparkles on those leaves okay so i've got my stamp that i used to stamp these out with the green which i will move to the back going to clean that stamp now because I don't want to pass any pigment ink onto my versifying and in the same sense as well if I pick up any micas from you I don't want to pass that onto the surface of my um, my versifying clear either so what I'm going to do now I'm just going to take the one stamp just hover where I've stamped the last one wipe it on my mat put that down ink it up stamp it wipe it ink it stamp it wipe it So I'm just wiping the stamp every time I've stamped it. Okay, so now we have those. And it's up to you how many you put on. Go less, you could do more. You know, it's all about personal preference. I'm just going to dry that stamp, place that away. Yeah, it's very, uh, I think sometimes we forget what we can use uh, Pixies for and, and certain products for. Um, so yeah, um, the other thing as well is I've now taken my, my nest of leaves, which is this little branch of leaves here. And I'm not actually going to be colouring these, I'm actually going to leave these and just stamp them black and that's all I'm doing is making branches okay so I'm going to the right hand side to the left hand side so you can make it look like different branches coming from a tree stamp it twice dry them up down that side and you start seeing that you get a nice little a little branch coming down here and you start building your little branches next to the big leaves so I'm going to come in there just dry in that And I don't mind stamping over again and over the top of them. I'm just going to come down there. Come there. And I'll just do another one there. So that I think is just right. I'm quite happy with that now. Okay. So that's using your leaf branches as you can see it just forms sort of a an overhang of leaves and, and stuff like that and this is the reason I turned this mat back down wipe that stamp 
put that away it's because I'd be stamping over the edge I wanted to be able to wipe that off my mat okay and now that I have that I know that I've got a little leaf stamp hmm? so the little leaf stamp thank you Mel I'd like to emboss a piece of card and then paint over it with yeah it's a good way of doing it isn't it do you use special card when using pixie powder um, with pixie powders you can use pixie powders or pixie sparkles or mica powders um, it needs to be a card that will take some water um, and it's the water that sort of fixes the powders really um, so you can either paint it tap your powders out onto um, the paper and if you go to our YouTube or look at the other lives that we've done that Gavin have done over the last uh, few weeks and months um, he's using pixie sparkles in a different way um, so yeah so you can use uh, any sort of porous card that's not super smooth that will take water an easy way to check is put a little bit of water on your finger rub the corner of your card and if it breaks down then it's not going to take a lot of water okay so I want to stamp some little leaves now just hanging off like I have on this one but I don't want to be stamping them with a light color and then coloring them and then stamping over them again so what I'm just going to do with this one I'm literally just going to go in with the green I'm just going to make the leaf shapes just coming off. Just like little teardrops in the odd little place. Like that. And then I'm going to go in with my blue just to add a slightly darker colour in there we are I am glad my lovely assistant brought me alright the stamping and painting is um, I, I love stamping you can do so much with stamping you can make your backgrounds you can make um, you know you can stamp an image and color it and you can spend ages coloring it using pencils paints um, and all sorts really micas uh, crayons charcoals you know there's all sorts of different things that you can do So stamping is very unique you can actually stamp over backing papers as well so if you don't want to do the background yourself um, there are um, different backgrounds you can use with a nice little pack on that you could actually stamp your frogs on and then color and stuff like that so so again I have my little Ursuline clay I'm gonna take my cloth there and where I've actually painted those little bits I'm actually just going to go in and stamp my leaves over the top yeah, there we are. so now I've got my little leaves hanging down so that's that Oh dear, um, if you've got your press to impress Jill, um, you can actually just use your elbow. So, you know, if you've got one 
because I know sometimes you like to push with one hand but if you fractured your wrist on the one hand you could use your arm or your other hand or just your elbow to push and you can link up with the other one as well. The press to impress does make it a lot easier to, to be able to do that. So that is my little leaves now so you can see that is all nice. And now I want to put some little um, bulrushes. So with the bulrushes, I'm going to take a slightly larger acrylic block. I'm going to take my green topaz again. Rub along the surface. I'm going to put my bull rush there and another one there. I'm just going to put one on this side as well where the frog is. Okay. And also there is um, a row of tadpoles as well. So the tadpoles I'm just going to go in with a black. One and then I'm going to turn the tadpole stamp over so that I get a, a row of tadpoles going along the bottom there. So this is all, all the stamped images have all come from one stamp set. Uh, the bull rushes are there but you can hardly see them which is what it should be. I'm just going to go in colour the grasses in the bulrushes. So I'm putting a bit of blue down first. Just to, so I can find my grasses. So I found my grasses there. And I'm going to go in with the green then. So mix up your powders again because they all sink to the bottom so you won't get so much colour. I'm not being too careful with this either. Get that green in there. that so that's the green they are they're brilliant didn't they oh dear Jill this you're full of the full of the accidents and the the things then oh dear so on my bulrushes and on my banks they look quite brown but there isn't a brown in the in the pixie sparkles at the moment they might be in uh, pixie powders but not in pixie sparkles at the moment so I'm using the coral crush and that's all I'm doing is I'm going to take some of the green first and do a bank I want my bank to come out there. So my bulrushes are actually on a bank of ground. And I'm going to take the coral crush, which I'm going to mix in, make sure I get lots of that mica. I'm just going to add that into there as well. Put that in. And you start getting sort of a, a brown sort of pad and then for the bulrushes itself I'm literally just going to go in I think they're called bulrushes anyway 
I'm wrong, tell me. So I'm going in with just the coral crush. I've gone in once and I'm going to go in again just to make that just a little bit darker. Back over there, and back over there. So now I've done that, I now need to stamp my bulrushes again. So I'm going to clean my, my, my ink off of that, the stamp. And I'm just going freehand on this one. You could have used your press to impress, but you would have had to have done one, colour it, dry it, and then stamp it again and then do it again, and then do it again. So I've just gone free hand here, just to show you you can do it. If you've got it lining up, dry the back. And I'm just going to ink it up now on the top. But what I don't want to do these bulrushes are actually in like they've got sort of rocks on them so i don't want to have all the rocks i just want the bulrushes and a little bit of the top of the rocks so i'm just thinking up a little bit of that if you can see that just see i haven't inked up all this bottom bit here so what i'm going to do then i line it up over the bulrushes and i'm going to stamp it And then again, all the brushes and stamp it. That one's got a bit of mica on it, so wash clean that off so I don't transfer that to, to that. And then the next brushes and stamp that. So as you can see, then you've got your nice brushes. Okay, so apart from the sentiment now, that is all the stamping. Okay, so as you can see, roughly my dragonfly is higher on this one, my frog's a little bit higher, that frog is a little bit higher. I've come down more with the grasses, so there's less in the center, less of an opening. I've got the same amount of bulrushes, but they're in closer. Got my tadpoles, just as I have on there. And the good thing about this is, is that you can always add more colour into here, okay? So as you can see, that's more blue, that's more green in there. So I can go in and sort of do more and more and more of this, but the first thing I want to do with this is add this dark colour around the edge, okay? So before I do that, I want to cut this down to the size that I want it to be, okay? So I'm going to take a bit off the bottom, and I'm going to take a little bit off this side and a fraction off this side. Okay. So on my card, my folded card, the card is 21. My black, I'm going to do at 19 for all the little cards. is going to be 19 and a half no 20 and a half sorry and then this is going to be 20 so I'm going to bring that down see where it cuts 20 is absolutely fine there you can come a little bit more if you want and then when you fold the card it's 15 centimeters that way and I'm going to cut the black will be 14 and a half so this piece will be 14 and it's actually 15 at the moment, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take half a centimetre off one side and half a centimetre off the other. So that I end up with that. So literally I'm not wasting too much of that card. So then and then these little brushes, I've got them all labelled up. Uh, a nice customer of ours actually did me some little labels. 
the set green, blue, red. So I'm actually going to use my blue one now with my lagoon. I'm going to ink that up. Now this is a quite a dark ink pad. And what I'm going to do is literally just go around the edges. So this is why I mean it's very forgiving this card because if you're done like sort of right around the edges then you can actually darken it up a little bit anyway. So I'm just keeping the colour to the edge because I know this is my size now. So, so that's the top part. And then even though that looks really light down the bottom, I'm actually going to put some colour into there as well. Remember me and Ian collecting tadpoles? Yeah, we know. Yes, we were little, little horrors we were. <laughs> yeah, we had a, an outside toilet and stuff in our first ever house we lived in. So we used to go to the to the pond and pick tadpoles. We put some tadpoles on the, on the windowsill and it was a boiling hot day and they had turned into little frogs. But my auntie had lovely long hair. And they were all tangled in her hair. She wasn't too pleased. <laughs> so there we are. So there's my colour around the edge. And because I've done that around the edge now, this is colour again that can be used. So I'll just take a spritzer bottle. Hi Helen, it's no problem. I hate wasting ink, so I'm gonna pick up some of this ink. There. And get my backgrounds going. So I'm making a new background for another card. And then you wipe off the excess. So these are microfiber cloth cloths that I'm using so it does absorb the moisture and dries your area really well. So that's that. So like I said the on the original one you can see it's a bit more greener. This one's a little bit bluer because I've gone a little bit darker but I want to add a bit of shadow under the under the, the, the pad and around the frog just a little bit more get some lines in there so it looks like water Okay. And I'm quite happy with that. It's got all that little shimmer. But the other thing I also did to get some to make it look like there was little sort of ready bronze flowers in the sky. I actually took my coral crush with the end of the brush. Just put a couple of dots around. Actually looks like little flowers then. And these will shimmer and catch the light as well. And the secret is knowing when to stop. Right. Okay. That's that. 
Okay. So now you can see there's not little shimmery bits on there. They could be fireflies buzzing around, yeah. Now the other thing you could do is take some um, white gesso or some white acrylic paint, add a little bit to your mat. Which, let's do it, shall we? Let's do it. And I can show you that, because that will have little flies around as well. I'm just getting my gesso. So the gesso I'm using is, it would look lovely with the fairies. So you could put mushrooms down here and have the fairies sitting on them. You, you know, even have little gnomes and make them little garden gnomes with the greenery coming around. So I've actually put some of this gesso in a little squirty bottle. And that's all I'm doing. I'm putting a little drop of the white gesso there. It was literally about a pea size. I'm gonna take some water on my brush and you just make it a watery white paste. just adds that extra little something into it as well and because gesso is a mat there we are so I've got some nice little white droplets around there now so it looks like little white flies about the place as well and again we can just wipe that up be careful because it does splatter sometimes so that the little splats go everywhere so that's why we use a mat And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start while this is drying. While that is drying, I'm going to stamp a sentiment. So I'm just going to take some, so I've been sorting out all my stamps into pockets. So two pieces of acetate, a bit of paper, cut to the size to fit in the pocket. And I just sort out all my birthday, all my birthday stamps in this one. So I think I'm going to use the bigger happy birthday today because I fancy it needs a slightly bigger one because I've come down further with the grasses. That gives me plenty of room up there. So I'm going to take the bigger stamp. I'm going to take. a piece of card, pop that into the corner, if you put it in the corner and it moves you've always got room to, to you always got scope to put it back in case it's not in the right place when it stamps and on the press and press you can straighten up your word in as well if it's not quite straight Marvellous. There we are. So I've gotten that. So I take my versifying clay, ink up my stamp, bring that over and stamp that. Lovely. First time. Wipe the stamp off nice and clean. And that can go to the back. So as you can see with this one the, the, the happy birthday was slightly smaller and I actually made like a little tag. So what I'm going to do I'm going to take that and pop that to the side. 
I'm going to bring in my give it a go Leslie because um, you'd be surprised what you can do with them there's a lot you can do with with a lot of things like that and then all I'm going to do is just cut that at a slight angle like that so I'm making my little badge like that and that badge is two centimeters wide so I need a piece of black and I always keep strips of black as people do <laughs> okay so I've got a piece of black starting to get all crowded with stuff now because I've been using everything that's fine here we are so I take a piece of black and I'm going to take um, my high tack all purpose pop a bit on a bit of on the back of my sentiment I'm gonna place that onto there and I got quite a steady hand so I'm just going to cut around and I always like to use a long scissors and then I can actually do it in more than one just one straight cut there we are so now I have a little banner I love painting with pixies um, at Christmas because you can just edge something as well with the finest of brushes um, especially if you've stenciled through something and you want to add a little bit of shimmer to it then you can do that as well so there's my sentiment I think I'm gonna get rid of my mat now because I've finished with all the inks and we're gonna be using the clean a bit now so so the first thing I need to show you something after the clock, after the live as well. Something that I've been working on. So first things first, I have an A4 piece of 300 gram card and I'm going to score that at 15 centimeters down the middle, which I will do in a minute. Then I have a black piece of card this is uh, 240 gram, could be 160 gram. And what I'm going to do, so this is for the front of the card and I'm also going to do a bit on the inside of the card as well. So for the outside of the card, so for the front, it needs to be 14 and a half wide by 20 and a half tall. So it's the centimeters. And then on the inside, I know it needs to be 14 by 20 and a half. So if the outside piece was 14 and a half by 20 and a half and the inside piece was 14 by 20 and a half. And then the 200 gram that I'm using in the white, I'm going to cut to 14 by 20 and that's to go on the front piece on the it, yeah, I only need half of that, sorry. Yeah, there we go. Just gonna look at that to you. Yeah. So I was so I needed to cut that to 13 and a half by 20. So 13 and a half by 20. So that's that. So the 13 and a half by 20 will sit nicely on there and go on the inside of my card with a nice verse in. And the other piece of black, which is 14 and a half by 20 and a half, will fit my nice little image there. Okay, so that is all my cutting done. So I can start assembling this card. So I'm going to take me my scoreboard. 
and my A4 piece of 300 gram card. You will find with micas as well that because they're highly pigmented with inks and dyes that they do stain your hands but use a bit of salt or sugar on your hands with some soap and that will take that off. So I've scored it at 15 and folded it and it's the larger side because there's always a little overlap the larger side should always be the front and that is a professional card okay so that's the card the table is nice and clean so it's not going to get dirty so your thing is curved you can either run your finger and thumb down each side or four sides like that which means now the curves are going downwards not upwards which means then it'll be easier to glue it onto your black piece it's always better to make it easier for yourself and we're going to use this glue again Put a little bit around the edge, not too close because we don't want it to ooze out. And I'm just going to do a wiggle down the middle. And this grips really quickly, so just making sure it's in place. And that's that. So this is a nice card for sending in the post because it is really thin as well. Just a wiggle there again. That will then fit onto the front of the card. A little sentiment. So you could put this on foam pads. But I'm actually going to keep it flat. I'm going to pop that along the top there. That's all that. And then on the inside, which was the 14, 14 by 20 and a half. That'll fit into the middle there. And then the white then was 13 and a half by 20. And the black was 14 by 20 and a half. That's there. And then I like to stick these in because I can still put that into my press to impress upside down like that and just place my verse inside that upside down. And then when I decide who I'm sending this to, I can stamp the verse in it then. So that is actually the card all done. So alongside the other one, the rather really similar but sentiments a little bit smaller and I've actually done that on a pattern piece uh, that on a pattern piece that on a non pattern piece and the bit I was using to wipe up all my bits that's literally a bit I used for that so you could actually use that for that as well okay so that was that and then I've done that there as well So I'm going to show you this pad now. You open up and I'm going. To... <laughs> oh, I'm glad you liked them. I'm going to show you something else as well in a minute. So I'm just going to bring this up to the up to the camera to show you. When you place an order, if you place an order for any of the bits that I've used today. 
when we come to the thing, it, in the sub total bit there just below it says add a coupon code. And when you so add a coupon code, and when you click in the coupon code, you type in ribbit ribbit. So ribbit ribbit, click apply and anything that's in the 10% off today it will actually tell you how much you've had off and then your subtotal. Okay so that is how the coupon code is going to work today for that 10% off. Okay so, so there we are so two different looking cards this is a lot more down a lot less light area there okay so that is that let me show you something I've been working on that's okay Maria I'm glad you like them I like the colors they're rather fresh they're nice nice fresh cards aren't they so you could put bunny rabbits along the bottom here you know and do all sorts of little bits like that so this little, no problem, so this little beauty by here is something that I've been doing and it's after seeing somebody called Paul Ford do a, they do all sorts of different books of sorts but I've designed this to hold all my dies or at least 15 pockets of dies so it actually opens up and then opens up again And then opens up again and then I have my laminating pockets that I've made for magnetic shims to go in with my dies on. And we are looking to do um, We are looking to do um, an instructional video for a class where we send you the kit for all of to make this actual pocket and the storage container. So it takes 15 of those. It's magnetic so that holds there, that holds there and then that holds there. And then that can stand on your shelf then like that and you can actually put what dies are in there. So I just wanted to show you that. Okay, so so again the code for the 10% off this is ribbit ribbit. Just put that to the side safe and they will dry back down to a hard, like a hard paint, which means then you can add your spritz of water back into them and rejuvenate the colours over and over and over again. Okay, so never throw these out. This will be put aside now for them to dry in the air and then I can rejuvenate it and repaint over and over and over again. It becomes a hard paint. Okay. So glad you enjoyed the card, I Judith. Glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, well the folder we're gonna start looking at doing some kits for that, so um and then there'll be a video for you to follow. Um we're just working on uh prices of the kit and stuff as well, so making sure we got everything in for everyone. Okay, so thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, thank you for supporting Valley Craft or your local craft shop. Uh, it is time to support local. And we'd just like to thank you all again. We really hope that you take care of yourselves in these times. And if you get a, a vaccination, go and 
and have it because uh, it'll help you and everybody else in the long run and we can maybe all get back to normal at some point hopefully sooner rather than later so thank you again thanks Bev thanks Tina thanks Carolyn thank you Judith and thank you to everybody that's watched today and thank you Leslie stay safe stay good and keep well and we'll see you again next week for another live bye bye everyone take care